This is the Greenline 36 Hybrid. It was launched back in January at the London Boat Show and it is a brand new boat, new hull, new superstructure, new everything and a new hybrid system which is a team up between Volvo Penta and Siemens. This boat, as you see it here, is about £340,000, but it does have a very comprehensive spec, including £30,000 worth of hybrid system. So let's get on board and see if it works. So here we are out on the water, and as I mentioned, this particular boat does have the hybrid system. Now that's around £30,000 extra, but you have to bear in mind that that also means that you get effectively a seven kilowatt generator as well that you can use to, to power the boat when you're not using it to move along. Now we're going along on diesel power at the moment, as you can probably tell. We've got a single D3, 220 horsepower from Volvo, top speeds, 17, 18 knots. We're doing about 15 at the moment, which feels very comfortable. But if you want to, you can throttle back, flick over to electric with a switch on the dash, and then you've got about 20 miles of range at four and a half knots in blissful silence. So there are other engine options on the 36. You can have a 370 horsepower from Yamaha, which is obviously going to give you a higher top speed, though you can't have the hybrid system. And for me, that sort of defeats the object of this boat. The hybrid system is the uh, attractive bit. And the other thing to mention is really, it feels very comfortable at the sort of speeds that the 220 horsepower engine gives you. 18, 19 knots, the hull is very comfortable there. We're doing 15, 16 now, okay, it's not that rough, but it feels like it would pretty much plough through anything doing this sort of speed, though we haven't managed to put it to the test properly today in that regard. In terms of handling, it's steady, it tracks very securely in the water, it's not particularly lithe or agile, the steering's quite stiff, but then it's not a sports cruiser, this boat is about setting the speed, setting your heading, and just letting the boat get on with the work, really. The driving environment is pretty good. You sit a little bit low at the moment, so on future models, the yard are gonna raise the helm seat a bit, which they need to do, because it's just a little bit of a stretch to see over this raised bit of dash. Again, could probably do with a bit of adjustment on the steering wheel as well. At the moment, it's just mounted straight into the dash and you can't move it around, and you find that you sort of catch your hand on the VHF as it stands, though this is going to move as well. But I love how bright it is over the helm station. You've got these two Webasto hatches electrically operated overhead, they're both standard. Obviously this big side door, great for ventilation, means you can very easily nip out onto the side decks. And you have a one-piece windscreen as well. And what's nice about that is as well as having nothing down the middle, it's got really thin mullions as well, which is quite a rare thing on a boat with a one-piece windscreen. So generally the view is really good, they just need to raise this seat a bit. So here we go then, we're coming down Southampton Water. This is a perfect example of when the hybrid system comes into use because we're about to go into the handle and it means that you can slow down and I think what you have to realize about the hybrid system is banish any thoughts of it being about fuel economy it's not really about that on boats it's about being able to transition between going along under diesel power like we just were and then throttling back and letting it all settle down a bit and then it's as simple as just stopping the diesel engine Wait a couple of seconds, flick over to electric, and you probably won't hear it on the camera, but you can just hear the motor begin to whir, and then through exactly the same controls, you engage the electric motor, and we're now purely using electric power. And it's all quite eerily silent, apart from the slight whir of the motor, and you can hear the water trickling off the transom, the work like this for going up the Hamble or inland work or you know, going, going up a river, it's really, really relaxing. And you have your readout here, little dial here, which shows you how much running time you have left, the charge. As I said, you get about 20 nautical miles, about four and a half knots. We're flat out now when we're doing five knots on the nose. Uh, and if you were to recharge using the engine, it's probably going to take you about an hour and a half and six hours offshore power. But if you're doing trips like this where you're mixing between charging along with the diesel engine on and then going to electric then you, you really do see the best of it and uh, it's 30,000 pounds but it really does add to the experience of being on board the 36. On deck it's recognisable green line which is no bad thing they're intelligent practical layouts on deck these boats that starts with the transom 
which folds down to create your bathing platform. And that is now done at the touch of a button as opposed to manually. So you press this control, it comes up and down. You have two big storage voids under my feet here. They could do with something on the lids to tie fenders to because as it is, they're so big, the fenders just get swallowed and completely lost. And then you have this top hinging window, which obviously does a great job of opening the galley up to the cockpit. That locks in place at the top there. And then you have this bar section, which folds down too. Like that, it's got some supports underneath. And then you have this fantastic inside outside space, which means you can easily move between the cockpit and the galley. A galley which is good in part improvement in other places. The sink isn't particularly generous. You're not gonna be washing many plates in there. It could do with slightly larger filters on these tops, but you've got good amounts of storage. And you also have a domestic size fridge freezer, which is really useful on a boat of this size. If we move forward a bit more, there are some changes to be made on this boat. One of those, which is to bring up the height of this unit here, so it's more in line with the window. It's all a little bit low at the moment. But what you really notice in the saloon of this boat is the amount of natural light. Loads and loads of light firing into here. You've got huge windows either side, two hatches above, one piece windscreen, and especially with this light wood, there is a dark wood option, but for me, the light wood works really well. So the 36 is a proper two cabin boat. This is the master here, as you can probably tell. And it's a typical green line forward cabin in that you have glass all the way around the coach roof here, which is great. You have windows either side lower down as well and a hatch in the roof. Again, like the saloon, it's really lovely and bright, practically done as well. You have scissor action berths. These just slide together and you've got a double in an instant. There's hanging storage here. There's storage peppered all the way around at eye level. And you also have ensuite access to the only bathroom on board. The guest cabin doesn't fare quite as well as this one. Headroom is pretty restricted over the bed. There's plenty of room at the end of the beds though. And going forward, they are going to drop the beds lower in the hell and lower the deck. So you do get a bit more headroom in there. So there you have it. There's the 36 hybrid. It is a fantastic overall package, maybe a little bit more expensive than you might expect. 340,000 pounds on the water. But as I said, this is very well spec and 10% of that is the hybrid system, which you don't have to have. Though it would be a shame because I think that really is part of the 36's charm. It isn't a gimmick. When we came in today down the Humble and we were on completely electric silent power, it was really amazing. And it gives this boat an element that many rivals don't have. And of course the rest of the boat is so good as well. Well packaged, cleverly designed, it looks good. And yes, it's a lovely warm winter's day today, but you could use this in rain, fog, shut the door, off you go. It's gonna look after you all year round. It's great to see Greenline back. Overall, fantastic package.